This article is called Firestorm. Wildfires are raging in record numbers. What's fueling the flames? During a single weekend in June this year, a stunning 152 wildfires ignited in Alaska. Flames crackled and spread through brush and fallen branches, dried out by warm conditions, and turned into perfect fuel. More than 5 million acres of Alaskan forest have burned so far this year, an area larger than Connecticut. This year may end up with the most extensive wildfires in the state's history. Alaska <clears throat> wasn't the only state on fire. Blazes raged across California, Washington, and much of the rest of the West. Thousands of people were evacuated as flames threatened homes. Extreme fire seasons like this are becoming more common. Before 2000, more than 8 million acres had never burned in a year in the U.S. since 2000. Since 2000, there have been six years when that happened. This trend could be the new normal. Fire starter. Wildfires happen when three factors come together, says Matt Jolly of the U.S. Forest Service. Jolly is an ecologist, a science who studies the connection between living things and their environment. The first factor is the weather. Hot, dry, and windy conditions dry out pine needles, branches, and other dead plant material on the forest floor. That material becomes the second factor, fuel. Once weather conditions and fuel are in place, all that's needed is a source of ignition, something that starts the fire. In the western U.S., that's usually lightning, says Jolly. In the eastern U.S., it's often people igniting fires. Sometimes they do it by accident, like when a campfire isn't put out properly. Other times, people maliciously start fires. That's called arson. And fireworks are a common cause of fireworks, fires. We see a peak around the 4th of July, says Jolly. People tend to view fire as a catastrophe. It's true that human-caused wildfires are never a good idea, but naturally occurring wildfires aren't always bad, Jolly says. Forests rely on fires to stay healthy. Blazes clear the forest floor so that new trees can grow. Fire has always been part of nature, says Jolly. It's when fires threaten people's lives and property that we see them as disasters. Mapping the Flames Lately, it seems like every time you check the news during fire season, the time of year when wildfire is most likely to ignite and spread, you see photos of flames raging out of control. The timing varies widely depending on local conditions, but summer and fall tend to bring many fires in the west. Are there really more fires there than there used to be? Or does it just seem that way? Jolly wanted to find out. Jolly and his colleagues studied weather data from around the world that scientists had gathered over the past 35 years. He and his team looked for four factors that increase the chance of wildfires. High temperatures, low humidity, many rain-free days, and high wind speeds. They pinpointed places that had experienced all these conditions at once and how long they'd experienced them. That told them how long the fire seasons around the world had been from 1979 to 2013. Being able to combine information about each day for every place on the planet is really powerful, says Jolly. Jolly and his team found that across one quarter of the parts of the Earth's surface where plants grow, fire season had lengthened. Globally, they found that fire season has gotten more than 18% longer from 18 days to 22 days on average. They also found that the total area of, at risk of fires has doubled, increasing from 4.4 million to 9.1 million square miles. It's clear that something has changed over the last 35 years, says Jolly. But what? Heating up. The world is gradually heating up. Earth's climate has always varied over time. But over the past 100 years, average temperatures have risen unusually quickly. Alaska, for example, 
has warmed by more than 1.7 degrees Celsius, or 3 degrees Fahrenheit, in the past 50 years. This warming trend, called climate change, also creates the hot, dry conditions that are ideal for fires. Not all scientists agree on exactly how climate change affects fire season or how big its role is, but overall, research suggests that climate change has contributed to longer and more severe fire seasons, says cl climate scientist Greg Garfin of the University of Arizona. Fighting back. Wildfires may be getting bigger and lasting longer, but people are fighting back to protect homes and property. Improvements in firefighting technology have given firefighters a host of new weapons. The U.S. Forest Service uses the same weather measures Jolly studied to judge current conditions. The agent uses the data to create a fire danger rating that indicates how likely it is that fire will strike any given area in the near future. The Forest Service also uses the data to create computer simulations of the landscape mapping where a fire is likely to spread. The simulation tool can make predictions as far as two weeks ahead of time. Firefighters can even virtually test out a fire prevention method, such as a controlled burn, a carefully managed fire set intentionally by firefighters to reduce the amount of fuel available and help prevent bigger wildfires. It's almost like playing a video game, Jolly says, of the simulations. When it comes time to fight a real fire, firefighters can fly over the burning area in airplanes equipped with infrared scanners. The scanners allow them to find out exactly where the fire is burning, even when it's too smoky or cloudy for them to see well. That precise, up-to-the-minute information helps them devise a plan of attack. With these new tools, firefighters can use smarter strategies than ever before to battle blazes. And if scientists are correct, they're going to need all the help they can get. If climate change continues as predicted, says Garfin, the kinds of fires that we're seeing now are a hint of what the future might hold. All right, and I wanted to zoom in on a couple cool parts of this article. So if we're looking at far right, there's a cool art, a little side article it's called Suit Up. It says this isn't an Iron Man costume. It's an idea for a suit that could someday give firefighters super strength. Traditional firefighting equipment such as helmet, coat, pants, gloves, boots, and air tank weighs as much as 25 kilograms or 55 pounds. That's a heavy load to maneuver through a burning building or challenging terrain. But someday, future firefighters could strap on this exoskeleton, dreamed up by industrial designer Ken Chen, a graduate student at Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. The exoskeleton would take some of the load off the firefighters' bodies, allowing them to easily carry up to 91 kilograms. So, let's see what they've got on. Batteries to suit it up, flashlight, a tool holder, water gun, I wonder if they're hooked up to a hose, um, emergency release system, and then this thing seems pretty cool. It's a foot weight transfer system so that all the weight of the suit isn't on the firefighter. It actually gets transferred down to the ground, which is interesting. Um, on the other page, there are some pictures. There's a car that was destroyed during a wildfire in September. Um, there's a picture of one of the methods they use to control fires, which is a fire retardant. It helps to, to stop it from spreading. And then the last picture is actually a controlled burn. So they have a controlled burn by setting up boundaries on it, and then they let the stuff on the inside just burn till the fuel is gone. That's the article, Firestorm.